Hello folks, my name is Dr. George, an abstract artist and a retired emergency physician of Woodbury, New Jersey. And we're in my art studio here in Woodbury, and my special guest with us today is Mark Partridge. And Mark is a fellow attorney, a master of business administration, and soon to receive his Master of Fine Arts degree from the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts. Mark, it's wonderful to visit with you today. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you so much, Doctor, for for being here, for me being here. It's a privilege to visit your studio and, uh, um, you know, happy that uh, we're having this conversation. And let's just go to the beginning of how we met. Uh, I was attending an art MBA workshop mm -hmm. conducted by Bridget Mayer, a Philadelphia gallerist and a wonderful art coach. And this meeting was conducted in the Roden Auditorium yep. at the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts. Yep. I knew about PAFA. I didn't know there was a wonderful auditorium one floor down. Yep. And it is a magnificent site, and a lot of student art is hung on the walls in the uh, pre-auditorium mm -hmm. segment of the space. And every time I would go in the auditorium, up the ramp, I would pass by this magnificent, large, red painting hanging on the wall and it would whisper to me stop and look <laughs> and and then when the break would take place and I would motor out of the auditorium it would be staring at me and I went through that a total of about six or eight times a day for two days finally at the end of the program I said I have to buy that painting and I asked Bridget Mayer to arrange for my purchase of this painting. And Mark is the creator of that wonderful piece of art called Blue Note. And you'll see, folks, images of that painting throughout our conversation. So that's how we got here today, thanks to Bridget Mayer and her wonderful workshop and PAFA and the Roden Auditorium. So tell us about Blue Note. How did you come to paint a magnificent work well, like that? Well, yeah, well, thank you very much. You're very kind with uh, your comments. Uh, but yes, you know what they say, right? Uh, repetition is at the heart of communication. <laughs> so <laughs> you see something many times and you uh, you know, it, you fall in love. There's that connectivity which is expected as an artist to have with a viewer, and that's exactly what uh, Dr. G is is describing. So, um, two years ago, um, I remember uh, I was in Pafa uh, in my studio, um, and I was uh, in the process. I was in a very exuberant, creative uh, mindset, like I. Uh, almost always find myself when I'm in, in front of a canvas. Mm -hmm. So um, this is an unstretched canvas and I unstretched this big piece of canvas, cut it without not even knowing, not even knowing the size, the width or the height of it, but I just saw it was gargantuan and I pinned it to the wall of my studio and then I sat across from it and I said, what are you going to do with this? This is a lot of real estate. <laughs> and so, yes, it was a lot of real estate. And so I grabbed a piece of charcoal, right? And I, was, I got in front of it and I started gesturing, you know, large cycles or shapes. And after I finished that, and I was going up and down and whatever. After I finished that exercise, I sat back and I saw it for another two days as it was. And like it typically happens, those uh, marks, those gestures begin to generate or, you know, a story in my brain. Uh, 
because I see them interacting, I see them flowing, even though they may not look like anything to anyone. Uh, but it plays in my mind, and I began then to uh, realize the possibilities of the art that was emerging there, and, and, and you know, at least how some of these gestures could be uh, clarified such that it became a play on, you know, a figurative place of fun and interaction. And so I, I then affixed those lines that I had drawn or gestures on charcoal. And then I have this about six foot piece of bamboo that I attached about a four inch brush and I dipped it on Indian yellow, which is the first color that I applied. And I did this huge swoosh, you know, between the lines that I had created. And the more, or, or that by itself, I sat back, looked at it, and I said, oh my God, there's something else revealing. So then that's how I began to bring to life um, these lines to the point where it became evident to me that this big swoosh was a figure interacting with this other big swoosh and then there's another swoosh over there interacting with others and I must have been listening to music I was going when to I began you. to you know apply certain other marks and shapes that looked to me like musical notes and I am not a musician nor I pretend to read music but I had a professor who came to my room one day during open night studio and said oh my god that's a blue note and he was referring to a particular notation that I had accidentally uh, uh, put on the canvas. But I did go into the music world and I attempted to research what a blue note was all about. And a blue note is a, a note that is um, played along with jazz and soul music. And it's one of those notes that adds um, like more drama to a note itself. And so it's quite uh, a desirable uh, note to play when you have the big guys of jazz playing because it provides a greater texture to the music. I didn't know all of that history by any stretch, but I know the color red in all of its yeah. iterations. And this is a beautiful color red and the fact that its name is a blue note with a small blue note as opposed in the yep. field of red is uh, interesting and yep. makes it makes it very interesting. That's the, the blue story. note is now mine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And Mark, thank you so, so much. Well, congratulations on acquiring this wonderful piece of art, and I hope that it brings you as much joy as it did in me creating it. It, it is, and it'll continue to do so. Thank well, you. Well, thank you, you so much. God Appreciate you. it. God.